بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبيل الدموع سبيل مريح تنا أدا يا صاحي كي تستريح وبث الدعاء الخفي الصريح يسعك الفضاء الرحيب الفسيح سبيل الدموع سبيل مريح تنا أدا يا صاحي كي تستريح وبث الدعاء الخفي الصريح يسعك الفضاء الرحيب الفسيح. So we're reaching this uh, 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 point uh, in which we, we, we have a problem uh, and how, it, how we can address this problem, how we can go forward. Um, so it seems as if here we, we're seeing that this division that's been taking place uh, hasn't really been deliberated over or, or thought of in, in, in great detail uh, without necessarily bringing evidence to support what it is that he's saying. And in fact, he could further say that this is actually going muhalifan lil ijma. Uh, and, and this is something which obviously is, is bringing about a, an issue. So what, we, what we'll turn to now is then, well, well what's the alternative? Um, how else can we understand that? Um, so when we look at the... Um, definitions now which is obviously very important to look at uh, what we have to say is that anna al-asla fil bida al-shari'a inna ma huwa qawlu nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam man ahdasa fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fa huwa raddun so here we saw i mentioned this hadith uh, during the introduction that that man ahdasa fi amrina ma hadha ma laysa minhu fa huwa raddun so when we look at the word al-amr here uh, then what we mean by this is clearly the deen okay this we're clearly talking about the deen here. So matters have to be linked towards the deen. Uh, so we're not talking about umur al muhdatha al al am. We're not saying in a general sense that any matter uh, that is it's brought about. So whether it's new uh, foods or whether it's new modes of transport or whether it's uh, uh, new modes of uh, communication, that all these are considered as bidah. No, it is referring to, and this is a misunderstanding that. Uh, is brought about that Islam being traditional and wanting to be uh, traditionally rooted uh, is somewhat stuck in the dark ages and it doesn't move forward with the technology quite the quite the contrary uh, when it comes to technology uh, Islam uh, advocates to its followers uh, to utilize whatever resources that they can get their hands on in order to achieve the goals that they wish to achieve both from a worldly uh, perspective and also from a dini perspective so this hadith sits is at the bedrock of defining uh, what a what a bidah is, and it's mentioning here is man ahdasa fi amrina. Uh, so amrina is key here that we're talking about the deen, uh, and we're not talking about anything else here. So this is the definition of al bidah sharia, okay? And we need to uh, uh, have this definition uh, in order to understand. However, uh, we also have uh, something which is called uh, a bidah lughwiya, okay? And it's important to understand that. And you will find, for instance, that the word bidah will also be used for that. Uh, because one is a legal bidah and one is a lexical or linguistic uh, bidah. So there's two to understand, a legal bidah and a linguistic bidah. And we've already defined what a legal bidah is. A legal bidah is, as being defined here, man ahdasa fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fawaraddun. That is a legal one in which an individual innovates a practice in religion uh, in, uh, and that is considered as a legal bidah. Uh, look we want a linguistic one is one which is different okay uh, for instance uh, the, the matter which we'll touch upon with respect to uh, the statement made by uh, uh, Umar ibn Khattab anhu, in which he said uh, in the hadith with respect to uh, or in the athar with respect to uh, tarawih when he said ni'matil bida now he used the word bida here but when the Sayyidina Umar is using the word bida he's using it in its linguistic meaning because in the linguistic sense a bida is anything which ex did not exist in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu anything but the Khulafa Rashidin hold a particular uh, position with respect to the Sharia and we'll touch upon that uh, in due course. 
when we again if we go back to this hadith man ahdasa fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fa waraddun uh we need to now look at the the next part which is ma laysa minhu that which is not from it okay that which does not have a source that which does not have a uh, a principle uh, or something which we can find a root uh something which we can uh hook onto uh within uh the the the, the nusus um so it's something which is coming from outside uh of the of the religion and uh, not something f- which is coming from within the within the deen itself so it's a it's a very uh concise uh but very deep meaningful narration uh which we can just touch upon again which is man ahdatha so that individual who innovates brings something new fi amrina in our matter of religion in religious affairs hada ma laysa minhu that which is not derived from it it is not a deriva- derivation from the nusus at all it is something which is coming outside uh, of the uh, uh, the deen um fawara dunna that itself is rejected which which is which is clear to understand um so i wanted to just at this particular juncture is just to bring some other uh, understanding uh, to uh, to light which is this 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 view um of bidah itself now we've mentioned that bidah is a an act which is which is innovated and we're lifting we're mentioning here al uh, al bidah sharia uh, we're not referring to the uh the 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 linguistic one we're categorically referring to the uh legal one um the linguistic one we we leave for now so if we see, as we've mentioned it as we've defined it is that thing uh which is uh which is no value if so individuals to do an act uh which has no basis in religion and they think that they will be rewarded for it okay this is the understanding is they do an act uh which has no basis in religion and they think they will be rewarded for it so for instance in some cases it can be in reality from outside of religion okay for example uh, uh the fasting of of silence uh this exists or has existed in the past in in some religions uh but it has no precedent whatsoever within the uh, uh, within islam so if somebody decided uh to do a particular act uh uh which was of um of this f- silence fasting and said that I'm not going to speak for 24 hours with the view that they thought they will get reward for it then this in itself is a bidda haqiqi okay this is a bidda haqiqa in reality there's no there's no abs- there's no uncertainty there's absolute clarity this concept has never existed uh within the religion of Islam it is something which has been innovated uh there is no evidence for it uh there's n- nothing in itself which a person can see how there can be any good in it whatsoever um it's just some it's an absolute clear crystal clear fabrication however there can be another one which can be a little bit cloudier which is more in its qualities uh that it be con- can be considered as a bidda and that for example could be in, in terms of celebrating the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's birthday in that one can define this as a bid a hasana that what i'm actually doing is a good thing i'm not doing a bad thing but there is no now they'll say well you know here's the, the uh, those individuals who partake in this will say well this is an act of uh, celebrating the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sending durood upon him and things of that nature uh, and therefore and and we can see that there is some of 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 particular on a general basis does exist within uh, within islam however the key point is is that in terms of its qualities uh it is still considered as a bidda is a bidda uh, uh based on its sifat its qualities uh in which that was there a need for this particular act uh, in the time of the sahaba for instance or in the time of the khulafa rashidin and if there was then why wasn't this act brought about then if it if it brought about a particular purpose so again in this case one can't define this as we're seeing that this definition which exists uh, about um uh, kind of grading them and placing them in various groups that this is mubah this is mandub uh, this is makru and this is haram and this is wajib this is uh, uh, an understanding which goes against 
uh, uh, the, the correct understanding of a bidah, uh, and we shouldn't look at it as am maksus, but rather it is a bidah in itself. Uh, the way we can separate between the two is one which is uh, linguistically a bidah, and we've already defined that, and linguistically a bidah would be defined something uh, which did not exist in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is in deen uh, and has no sig significance whatsoever because it's been innovated and fabricated. Uh, and um, sorry, I think I've crossed the two two over there for you just to confuse you even more. Uh, the linguistic one would be something which did not exist in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So linguistically, it's a bidah. However, in the legal meaning of it, it is not considered as a bidah, and that's particularly in the saying of the uh, saying that uh, uh, Umar al which we'll move on to next. Uh, the other one is the Sharia version, which is the one in which some individual innovates something in the religion which hasn't existed in the past, uh, which has no, uh, 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 no nothing which is, exists within the uh, Hadith or the uh, Quran, uh, and bring about that understanding. So next, we move on to. Uh, Umar al uh, in which we discuss um, his, his particular point of view, is that individuals will say that, well, there must be this, uh, uh, this, this gradation of, of hadith uh, because Umar al himself uses this gradation uh, because he refers it to a ni'mat al -bidha. However, uh, during the introduction, I mentioned two hadiths that we'd go back to. One was the one we just we talked about in great detail now, in which that matter, man uh, fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fawraddun. Then other hadiths that I uh, wanted to draw your attention towards again, which is uh, the, the one of the first ones that I narrated, which is fa alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafai rashidin al mahdiyin. فَتَمَسَّكُوا بِهَا وَعَذُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِزِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّا كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدَى وَكُلُّ بِدَةٍ ذَلَالًا Now in this, in this one sentence alone, the Prophet Sallallahu is making a statement which removes all this misunderstanding that what Sayyidina Umar Sayyidina Umar did was actually a legal bid'ah. Because the Prophet Sallallahu mentions, he says, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسُنَّةِ وَالسُنَّةِ خُلَفَاءِ رَاشِدِينَ that you should adopt my sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa Rashidin. The Prophet himself used the word sunnah when he's describing the acts of the Khulafa Rashidin. He's also clearly suggesting that the acts of the Khulafa Rashidin would be different than his acts. Otherwise, there'd be no point in saying bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa rashidin because the sunnati khulafa rashidin would be exactly as the sunnah of the Prophet. So he would have just said sunnati khalas end of. But instead he mentions bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa rashidin suggesting or clearly stating that there will also be actions which the the khulafa rashidin will do which I haven't done. Now even though they may, they may be linguistically considered as a bidah because uh, ling from a linguistic perspective a bidah is anything which did not exist if we look at it from, from, uh, from the Islamic point of view a bidah is anything which did not exist in the time of the Prophet sallallahu that is a bidah. But there's two. One is the linguistic and one is the sharia. We now have uh, books of fiqh. Uh, we now have, which we didn't have before. So one could argue, well, that's a bidah, that's an innovation. But this is not considered as a sharia. Uh, we're not, they were not changed. This is not bringing about a change in the religion. Uh, this is uh, in order to, it is an innovation, it's not something which was done in the past, like the teaching of Nahwa, like the teaching of Sarf, like attending a Madrasa, all these kind of things are bidha in that sense, but they're linguistic bidhas. They are those reasons, they are those which didn't exist in those times. And if you go back to the Hadith, Man Ahdasa Fi Amrina, clearly he's talking about in the matter of Deen, in terms of the Sharia, Fi Amrina, Hada Ma Laysa Minhu, that which is not from it. And obviously teaching Tajweed, in order to understand, uh, recite the Quran, uh, teaching Arabic in order to be able to read Hadith, uh, uh, ensuring that the narrators of the Hadith are valid, uh, to be able to uh, quantify and uh, give a value to a Hadith. Uh, these are all considered as bid'a innovations, uh, but these are linguistic innovations. They are not uh, matters which are from outside of the religion which are coming to change the Sharia which are coming to change the religion they are not here to do so <clears throat> so was sunnati khulafai rashidin al-mahdiyin fatamassaku biha wa'addu alayha bin nawajis 
and hold on to it with your molars and we mentioned that so we've also mentioned uh that a bidah is the absolute opposite of the sunnah and that was a hadith which we mentioned which was ma ahdasa qawmun bidah illa rufi'a mithluha min as sunnah that some when someone whenever a group of people uh bring about an innovation then the result of that is it's equivalent meaning the particular practice which should have been done in the, in its place will be removed from the sunnah so bidah is opposite to the sunnah and the prophet sallam is describing the acts of the khulafa rashidin as sunnah and then he says within the same sallallahu alaihi wasallam within the same hadith he says wa iyyakum wa muhdathatil umur so he doesn't so he's not that he's using the word sunnah here in a different way he's clearly well aware of obviously fabrications and he's still stressing the point of fabrications uh obviously clearly he's not mentioning the new matters which the khulafa rashidin brought about because if he was referring to them then he would have also included them within this and he said wa muhdasatil umuri fa inna kull muhdasatin billah for every fab fabricated matter for every innovated matter is a uh, or every new thing is a bidda wa kull bidatin dalala and every bidda every innovation is a deviation yet within the very same sentence within the very same breath there is bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa rashidin al mahdiyin that their acts may linguistically be seen as an innovation but through a legal capacity from a legal perspective they are not an innovation and what the prophet sallallahu is speaking about here are those which have a legal weighting uh, not a linguistic weighting and it's those matters which already so for instance let's take the example of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, 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 celebrating his birthday many individuals will say the reason why that is done is so that we can remember the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and that's our purpose well we already have a way of remembering the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that's to send durood upon him uh, especially uh, on a friday uh, he asks uh, that we should send salutations upon him uh, and by saying sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa allahumma salli ala muhammad so there's already something in place in order to achieve that uh yeah some individuals will say well that's just not enough uh we feel that it's a disrespect to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that such a great blessing has arrived on the face of this earth and we're not actually celebrating that and when you look at the sound of it you think well it does sound right well the, the issue with the bidah itself is that it's not something which sounds bad because something which sounds bad is clearly a sin so if somebody said well i think we should uh, drink alcohol or i think we should steal or i think we should do this then nobody's going to consider that to be a bidah because that in itself is a sin a bidah on the face of it looks good it looks like something which is worthwhile something useful uh, but what it is doing is is that it's uh, affecting a practice which has already been established by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that really uh, sort of brings about uh, the the key the key message uh, that i wanted to sort of get through today uh, in terms of defining uh, the legal uh, bidah so if we just go a little bit further and add, add a little bit meat to the bones um, what we're talking here is that a legal bidah is a, a matter which is invented uh, that does not have any substantiation from the four sources of the deen uh and those four sources from the deen obviously is the quran uh the sunnah uh, ijma and reasoning uh which is based uh which is not a source obviously the reasoning is not a source and uh, however i'll touch upon those uh topics in in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in another recording um and they do these acts believing them to be from religion uh, and something in which one expects to be rewarded from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and actually gain good deeds okay uh and 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 do that we have for example we have from the shari from the from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we've been obliged to seek knowledge to memorize it to spread it to support the religion to defend it to purify souls and refine them uh and therefore it's a, re a responsibility uh for the ulama uh of those individuals to bring that about uh through various means Uh, and that's their job is to bring that about through various means and these will not be considered as a legal bidah but these will be considered as linguistic because we use different practices i'm here now you know sat in front of a camera uh, being recorded uh, i'm sure none of the sahaba uh, experienced that 
uh, and many of the individuals who came after, many of the great scholars have experienced that. But it's now being used as a medium uh, to get the message of Islam out uh, to individuals uh, who may be easy to get to through these various devices. So the work is the same, the purpose is the same, which is to uh, spread Islam and uh, spread a better understanding of Islam. But we may start using different processes and different methodology uh, as the ulama see fit. Uh, rather than saying, well, this is considered as an innovation. Uh, it, it is obviously clearly an innovation linguistically, uh, but it's not an innovation from a Sharia perspective. Um, I could touch, I could sort of go into somewhat more detail, but I think from, from what I wanted to, from what I wanted to achieve, I think that's, that's more than adequate. Um, because the main thing is to bring a, a, a basic understanding uh, and to differentiate between the two uh, just for the sake of summarizing in case you've been asleep for the last uh, half an hour or so then maybe you can just sort of fast forward into these last few minutes is that we have this early definition that Bidda itself can be split up into various groups uh, various grades or various uh, sections and based upon these, it can be wajib in certain cases, uh, mustahab in certain cases, makru in certain cases, uh, mubah in others, and, must, uh, uh, and mandub in others. Um, however, uh, the consensus is that this is, a, uh, this is an incorrect understanding. And the correct understanding is that bidah is, is split into uh, two only because of uh, the impact it has. One is that it's a linguistic meaning, and that is the word that how it's used in the in the language. That it's an innovative thing; it's a new thing. Uh, here, obviously, we've seen the use uh, by Sayyidina Umar anhu, in which he said "Ni'mat al bida" uh, with reference to the taraweeh, uh, and uh, which clearly did not exist in the time of the Prophet or some. However, that's been explained that this is actually considered as a sunnah. So why did the Sayyidina Umar Ali use the word bidah? Because he was using the lexical meaning of the word. It is a bidah, it's an innovation. He wasn't using the Sharia perspective because he knew he, he as well as his colleagues, the Khulafai Rashidin al Mahdiin, had the license uh, to be able to bring uh, new matters in as the time demanded uh, once the Prophet uh, left the face of the earth because the circumstances would change, the situation would change. Uh, going from uh, a leader being a prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, to now being uh, a, a non-prophet, that would have obviously major uh, uh, ramifications uh, in the community, uh, both Muslim and non-Muslim, as we saw. Uh, and so we've seen uh, this discussion, and we're left with this uh, uh, understanding, um, which we've, we've which we've drawn uh, a conclusion to. Uh, I hope uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala has given me the ability to be able to. Uh, explain in some form, some shape, uh, uh, an overview uh, of A, the misunderstanding, uh, B, the correct understanding, uh, and how uh, this linguistic and legal sharia differentiate the linguistic, uh, those which aren't, we're not expecting to be rewarded for themselves. Uh, there are innovations which, because they didn't exist in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, but they're linguistic, like we saw Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab use, but even in Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab's situation, because that was in religion, his is considered as a sunnah, uh, because that's how the Prophet has described him. But any other things we do, books, madaris, schools, the way we teach, all these various types of methodologies which may not have been utilized by the Prophet, they are not, uh, uh, we are not expecting reward for them. Uh, they are done in order to achieve something else, which is what we're expecting reward for. Similarly, uh, so, so furthermore rather, uh, those situations which are innovated, in which we are seeking reward for that particular act itself, uh, then that's obviously without clear, without any shadow of doubt defined as a uh, a, lingu a legal bidder. Uh, uh, that's a, a, the link. It's not a linguistic, but a legal bidder. Um, wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alameen subhanak wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi